Hello everyone. I need to sleep. <laughs> okay, this is my last live stream video for tonight. And I, after that, I'm going to bed, guys, and everything. So the title of today's, I'm doing a kind of like a catch-up. And this is, once again, another episode of From the Angora, the Future of Hellenism, and how the heck did you get involved in this? Um, so, uh, yes. Um, I think that would be an extremely funny thing to say. How the heck did you get involved in this? Uh, because I like to hear stories about how people got involved in Hellenism, how they discovered their path, and everything. So once again, got the two books out because um, I have not decided to get up off my fat butt and go put them away. So, um, and also, of course, these books will later on be used in one of the videos that I'm going to be doing live stream um, probably next month or something like that. But definitely, definitely going to do that. It deals with uh, it deals with the gods and stuff in popular movies and video music, movies and games and stuff like that. So that should be a pretty interesting video to do. And hopefully, it will last longer than about twenty minutes. So okay. So once again, we're in my little temple of shirt. You saw my last two videos. Um, so, the future of Hellenism and how the heck did you get involved in this? So, here it goes. So, um, I'm going to start off by talking about how did I get involved in Hellenism. And if anybody wants to chime in and everything, that would be great. Um, so, I actually discovered Hellenism by accident. I, my mother had made it clear that she did not want to be practicing Wicca and witchcraft. And so I went looking and searching for um, other paths that I didn't want to give up paganism. And I discovered Kemeticism. And then I noticed in the description of Kemeticism that it was a reconstructionist religion. So I actually clicked. You know how, you know how words will be like, you can just go over the word and you can press that word and it will take you to another window and you can read. Well, I did that and it had this list of Reconstructionist religions and Hellenism was on them, on it. So I clicked it and I started reading about it and I was like, wow, this is something that I really love. My I love the Greek gods and goddesses. I do love the Egyptian. Don't, don't. You know, I do, I do. Um, but I like the Greek gods and goddesses. And oh, and so I was like, wow, this looks like something that would be interesting to do. Uh, unfortunately, I was not able to buy Greek statues. I still cannot I believe that I actually got a statue of the Egyptian god Seth and actually managed to have in the house. That just amazes me. <laughs> oh, man. Um, but, yeah, so I started practicing it, and I actually joined a forum um, that was run by a guy called Timothy J. Alexander. Piggy boo! Uh, it was actually run by Timothy J. Alexander, and I learned a lot about the basics of Hellenism, about what Hellenic people believe, and there was a lot of, like, deep, deep thinking and deep thought. Um, and so you go and you, um, you have these people talking, and every once in a while, you would get a Wiccan on there, and they would talking about how magic is not how magic is not hubris, and that I work with the gods. And I immediately chimed in, so like you work with your athame. And I swear, people are like, oh, somebody hit it on the nail. And it's like just like the tone of the words that she used were like. Yeah, you know, I work with Zeus 
and you know and and he gives me money and everything and i'm like oh no because i had been involved in hellenism at the time for about a year and i kind of had this belief of okay i'm a fact girl i am a i am a i'm a girl that like yeah i gotta have facts in front of me it's got to be written by somebody in 50 bc and all that stuff oh the good old days of tim <laughs> yeah i hope you guys i hope you remember the wiccan uh but yeah like i was like yeah it'll be written by somebody in 127 bc and or to be to be fact and i sounded like a uh, evangelical christian <laughs> but it, it, it's it, it's really weird it's like when you actually encounter somebody it's like i was on that forum and it's like then then they had this interesting article um, I don't know if it was an article or it was a question I just asked of, okay, why the heck would you circumvent a temple and turn into a church? Yeah. Oh, gosh, we really are. Oh, I know. We are so freaking old. I'm 40. I got involved in Hellenism when I was, like, in my late 20s, like, late tw like middle 20s. It's like... Oh my freaking god! I've been a Hellenist for a lot longer than seven years. Oh, oh yeah, we are freaking old. I'll tell you something. We are so freaking old that we know what we know what it was like to do this to a tape. I swear, I'll be like, oh. sorry, I had to freaking. I hate my back itches. But yeah, so, you know, next time I do a live stream, I was like, okay, I'm going to get, so please excuse me. I got to grab a back scratch because my back is killing me. So, pardon me. Hold on a second. Oh. 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 All right. I am back. Uh Oh, yeah, I'm almost 40. My brother's like 32. Yeah, 32. Okay, that feels so much better. <sighs> I'm sorry, but, oh, I couldn't take any more. Um, so, yeah, it's like, it's just like, it amazes me. But people would go to that forum, and they'd be like asking all these questions. And my big question would be, why the heck? Would they circum? Well, okay, not circumvent. Sorry. Why would they go and take a temple and turn into a church and worship there? And it's like it amazes me. And it's like you you go and you read historians and say, "Well, this is the reason they did it," you know. And it's like that does not make a bit of sense. It just does not. Okay, I know there. Were, I know. You got all these buildings that you did stuff to them. But yeah, we're going to turn into a church because it's a building and we don't have to build one. You're lazy assholes. Just seriously, build your own freaking churches. Um, and that's what they were. They were lazy. Like, it doesn't, like, it doesn't take much smart to actually build a church. You guys built these big old freaking temples and you can't even build a dang freaking church. Seriously? So that was interesting. And then, of course, I got his books. And I remember I had gotten one of his books for Nook. Um, it's really weird. I actually had a Nook at one time, which is bizarre. Because um, I remember my mother had wanted to go to the synagogue. And so I'm like, okay, we'll go to the synagogue. And I'll tell you something, they're nice people. They're really nice people. The only thing I was uncomfortable with is them giving children alcohol. It wasn't that much. Maybe a couple, maybe like this much. But so they did have a five-year-old drinking wine. Just kind of really nerved me a little bit. But he was talking about these e-readers. These e like He's like, that was back when they were like, 300 some dollars which is shocking to uh, yeah i know but that's what happened to greek civilization when you got christianized yeah definitely they actually molded down to its foundation 
and then they built on it. But the thing about it was, the votive offerings were like there, like, um, like I had read that, um, that you could tell what God the floor was dedicated to by the amount of old offerings underneath it. So, so these temples had been built so long ago that the church actually forgot the votive offerings were actually in the foundation of the temple. So people were basically worshiping their God on top of a pile of votive offerings to another God. And personally, I think, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, that's how archaeologists are able to identify who, what temple was dedicated, that temple was dedicated to, the votive offerings. Um, it's kind of interesting. You go look at like the Tower of London, and there's like, I think, one dead black cat that's been in there since forever. And it's designed to give the place luck. I don't know how that works, but it's kind of like odd. So you, so it just amazes me about it. And I just love reading all these books. I read Greek Religion by Walter Burkert. And basically, he does touch on witchcraft and magic, and I forgot what he said in the book, but you look at, like, the, um, the curse tablets, and I cannot, even when I'm wide awake, I cannot pronounce the name. But, um, yeah, so you have, you have these curse tablets, because there was this big argument that went on, um, about magic, about it being hubris, and um, and so it's like you know you're arguing with a Wiccan about why people think the way that they do about the subject of magic, but what really really seemed me off was a lot of Hellenists' views about ikati or. Ik Ikati or Hecate or he Hecate. You know, there's at least, I think, like seven different pronunciations for one goddess. It's like Hecate, Ikati, uh, Hecate, uh, you know. Um, there, I was actually reading, not reading, not reading, listening to a podcast on Hellenismos, and they were actually talking about how we're pronouncing the names of the gods is not how the ancient Greeks pronounced the names of the gods. Um, so when I go and I say, well, her name is Ikati, she is a virgin goddess, she is not a crone goddess, I get dozens of Wiccans who come out and say, well, that's not my experience with her. And then one guy was saying that Aleister Crowley turned her into a crone, and one source says the church turned her into a crone because she was still famous. And then I found out that they, that Dionysos was still worshipped as far as the 14th century. And there used to be a statue of Demeter that was stolen by this asshole that, you know, he saw what he wanted it. And the farmers were like, yeah, we sort of need her for our crops. And now that part, now that section you can't grow anything, which is, whoa. So now she's in a glass case at some museum, totally ignored. And that sucks. So when you start on the road to, for me, when I start on the road to Hellenism, like they have like um, old stone new temples. When I was a member of Helion, 
they gave me a copy, a PDF copy of the book. And weirdly, I found it. I found my old PDF file. So I've been reading that book. And was, oh, there's no point in arguing with Wiccans, especially eclectic Wiccans, because they just cherry. <laughs> yeah, we all thought Christians were bad. Um, it's like, yeah, you know, we're all for this, you know, white supremacy stuff, but, and, you know, but we'll totally ignore the part about eating shrimp. Um, pardon me for a second, I gotta get something to drink. So, yeah, we're gonna mull that over for a bit. Brother taking my soda. <clears throat> Sorry about that. <laughs> Brother took the soda. Now taking my soda. Oh. So, yeah, so we all have this kind of like, you know, I really. Yay, Christians, don't get me started. <laughs> Yeah, I totally agree with that. Don't get me started on Christians. I love them to death. I really like the ones that basically like, yeah, we're sort of going to obey the rules and close our churches. This Sunday, they're starting in-person services. I kind of wonder how long that's going to last. Um, but, yeah, so I, so, you know, I went and I started to honor them. And there was, you know, there's so much. So much was written about the Greeks. So much we know about the Greeks. And then I was looking to, like, um, whatever turns you on, sir. Uh, so uh, we were looking, I was looking into, like, um, Cretan, like, um, you know, the gods of ancient Crete. And I will agree. Oh, Michelle. Okay. Yeah. Um, that, th yeah, uh, I agree on that. I think it was Dalai Lama that said it. So you have um, so you have people that come into Hellenism, and I, you know, I, I have been a, I have been a believer in the ancient Greek gods since I was on that forum so long ago, and you know, I, I do like to every once in a while just you know, give an offering to Odin or to Morgan to kind of like, I don't know, to kind of like to acknowledge the gods of my ancestors, which I think is important to acknowledge that, yes, your ancestors were pagan at one time. Um, but my heart definitely is with the great gods and their stories and their adventures and their heroes and everything. And I really think that when you have people that read these stories and they find out about the ancient Greeks and everything they did, and especially when they go over there, like I can take a greyhound and thankfully you can take a greyhound now, uh, but you, you have to kind of like, do that six feet. I don't know how that looks on the bus. So when all is said and done, I'm actually going to go over to Athens. Sorry, I'm going to go to Athens. Uh, I'm going to go to Nashville, and they actually have a um, the Nashville Parthenon, and you can go inside and everything. Um, and it's kind of like it's kind of like a pilgrimage for a lot of people that are Hellenic. They go there, and they um, will. You know, pray to Athena, 
and they will leave off. Well, they're not inside because it's not it's not considered a temple. But um, I had asked a question on that forum about, you know, hey, you know, I want to go to Nashville and I want to leave an offering to Athena. You know, what do I do? And they're like, well, you know, if it's, you know, if it's, you know, how should I say it? Um, if it's, you know kind of like not big or I, I forgot what the words were but basically you can go outside and you can leave an offering to Athena as long as it's not noticeable and I kind of like really kind of stared at I'm thinking okay I'm not killing a oxen to her okay I'm not doing that I just want to leave an offering to her and to thank her for all that she's done in my life and everything. Isn't it class as a museum? Oh, yes, it is a museum. It is a museum, but it looks like a temple. And I do know uh, somebody said that they left um, a, what did they leave? Never got the word roll. I think they left a cinnamon roll or they left a roll or something like that. I know there was a roll in it, um, but they left it there. Uh, they left it, it was, they actually went to, they actually found a spot that was actually directly in front of the museum and they left their offering there. Um, and the funny thing is, and I laugh at this because it's funny as that. So every, so the gods, it, it, you know, and I've gone to these weird journeys. Like, I've, I've seen this and I've seen that. And I'm like, yeah, um, okay, that's weird. Um, but it's, it's kind of like you go down this path and you encounter all these little oddities along the way. And... You go and you're like, okay, that's weird. So about three or four years ago, I was on Baron the Aegis. I think that's her her name, her her blog name, and she was talking about the graveyard of the gods. Yes, let's love atheists on this one. So they have this. Um, graveyard full of gods that one day the people decide not to worship them anymore. Totally ignoring, oh yes, thank you. Um, totally ignoring historical fact. I'm thinking, okay, you're a group of people, right? Ah, yes, love her to death. She did a couple of videos and she stopped making videos. I miss her videos. Please bring videos back, please. Um, so, so, this group of people will be run by logic and reasoning and everything, and they're ignoring the fact that these gods were not one day they decided not to worship them. They were forced to stop worshiping them by the church. And if you ever encounter these delightful group of people that totally ignores the historical fact, please remind them, that maybe the little facts behind your, your graveyard? Yeah, me too. I missed the videos. Such good videos. Yes, it was. It was really good videos. I actually have a bunch of, like, matches, and I actually use that for to purify my water, which is great. Um, I actually have to dump out some old water, and I'm going to make a new batch. But, you know, it, it's kind of like, it's kind of like, they're having this graveyard, and it's always, they do it always in October. What can she do in June or July when it's still warm out? No, they do it in freaking October. And I guess the, I guess it's like the graveyard thing is supposed to go with like Halloween, but they freaking like insult everybody that worships the gods. And then they have the audacity to put gods down that are still worshipped like by the Hindus. Oh, this god was not worshipped, stopping worship like 
no, there's actually about a hundred temples out for that for that deity in India. Where have you been? Seriously. So it proves one point. Even atheists can some most sometimes not get their facts straight. But it was funny because apparently <laughs> apparently somebody had gone to that stupid display and had given an offering of wine to Ephrodite or Ephrodite. Um, and it was funny as heck to, to like, you have this graveyard of the gods and you draw polytheists who sort of want to tell you, yeah, by the way, these gods have now been re-worshipped. So we're, they're not dead. And I don't see the point they're making with this graveyard of the gods. It seems to me it's like the same tactics, just different people doing it. Like, for instance, is the Christian church spent all this time and energy and money convincing hundreds of millions of people that their God was the only God. And militant anti Theists, let's make a difference between atheists and anti theists. Militant anti theists spend all this time, this money, and this energy to try to convince hundreds of millions of people that their God is not real. Um, can we please say it's the same waste of money? People are going to believe what they want to believe, and you just need to suck it up and accept that. People are going to believe what they want to believe. So there's no need to like build them unless you absolutely can't stand the people that are, you know, still around that worships them. But it was, it was a funny, it was a hilarious, um, you know, article. And I was like, yeah, that was funny as heck. But this is where my path has gone down. And, um, you know, it, it sucks. Um, I was, this happened a couple days ago, and I was thinking, what the freaking heck is going on with these rental companies? And going a little bit veering off course here for a little bit. So my brother goes to... You know, yeah, okay, you know, I've got the money because my brother got a stimulus check. And he, this kid, he freaking just pinches pennies. It's like if he gets tips, he uses only the tips. He's, he's a good kid. A very open-minded, very understanding, love him to death and everything. And he calls up and they said, well, based on your credit score, which he didn't know at the time, we have to do the rent trip, well, not the rent, sorry, the security deposit triple. So to move into the apartment without the rent, you had to give them $2,200. Better journey, one has to go down the yellow brick road to find out what you truly, yes, I agree, totally agree. So it was $2,200. And I was like, I got a hold of my landlady. I'm like, is this even legal? She's like, no, it's not legal. It's legal to, to say, okay, you got to make this much money in order to get the apartment. That's legal. It's called an income threshold. Um, and it's kind of, it kind of really bothers me that, an illegal thing is legal. Now, if the rent is, say, $2,500 in your security deposit, a lot of places they'll charge like the same amount of security deposit they do for the rent. But when you move out, you get that back unless you have a demon cap that destroys everything. Yeah. Loki comes to mind when I think of that. I actually named him Loki, and it fit him. So, 
that was uh, that was an interesting thing. I was like, what? That much for security deposit? You have got to be joking. So, yeah. So, uh, little update on. Do you still have Loki? No, I do not have Loki. Um, actually gave him up to the animal shelter. They named renamed him Cat. Just bizarre. He got adopted. So hopefully he's happy and healthy wherever Loki lives. So, but I rescued him. He was so cute, but he was a monster, and I named him Loki. Um, next time I will probably name uh, probably name my next animal after a Greek god. Um, so I mean they let you have dog like Derby Run. They let you have dogs or a cat, but it can't be one of the dangerous breeds. I'm thinking. I'm just imagining an apartment building full of chihuahuas. I just, just thought that. <laughs> I was thinking, I was like, dang, does Ruby Run have like a apartment full of chihuahuas or little dogs or like championship baby terriers or something like that? I don't know, but uh, they don't allow the dangerous breeds in. Which, oh, I hope he has a good life. I know. He's so cute. Um, I actually, I actually think I got a video of him. I just, you know, I kind of like. Not this guy. Not, nope. We're moving. Not with him. Um, but it's interesting, you know, get, you know, it's interesting to how things go and how your path just kind of, it's not straight. It's not a straight path. So, um, but yeah, so uh, another thing that I discovered, um, when you go down this path, you go on any kind of path. You're going to encounter authors that wrote one book that nobody seems to like in the Reconstructionist, in Reconstructionist group, but then he publishes a book that is purely a Reconstructionist book. And, okay, so the name of the book, um, let me bring it up. Sorry. Um, yeah, here it is. Uh, I'm actually going to buy this book. Um, it is uh, Hellenismos, Practice in Greek Polytheism Day by Tony. Uh, I cannot pronounce the name. I cannot pronounce his last name. And so this book was really delayed, and it was actually published by. Um, let's see who published it. Uh, pop. Who published it? Oh, Luella. Lu the, you know, the, the Crescent people. And it's interesting about how they're sort of changing course with their books. Um, years, years and years ago, when I was a little, little, little baby witch, um, there was a lot of books out that like by so Rain Wolf and Scott Cunningham and Rain Buckland and all that type of stuff that dealt with like Wicca and they had things that obviously made no bit of sense. Well so Rain Wolf didn't make a bit of sense. The other ones were okay. Um and so I read those books and I absorbed those books and I know from my over whatever decade of uh, being a Wiccan, I, or now a former Wiccan, um, I know how bad it is when you're trying to publish a book that has solid information and you are chastised by people. So, uh, for example, is... Um, let's get to the reviews because we need to go to the reviews. All right. Um, let's go and scroll down. I hit that. It's like they put this big old advertisement on it and it's like, okay. Um, okay. So it was published in 2018. Finally. Yeah. Um, 
So, okay. Um, okay. So, uh, one person says this book is a superior source has been slammed with bad reviews because of the reputation of Llewellyn publishers. In most cases regarding Llewellyn, I would agree with the negative reviews, but this most certainly is not the case for this book. Tony has carefully researched and footnotes are provided to back the material in the book. The book is a great addition to Hellenismal study and will definitely shed light upon alternative reconstruction choices that followers of Hellenismos may want to further investigate. It goes on and on. Um, then well one says, I think this is the best part of this book. This is the practical advice for working through the lunar month of devotion according to the Athenian calendar. I actually have it on script as well. Um, well, like you must have for your library, excellent reading source, great book. Um, let's see here. Um, the guy gave it four stars, but he did say that, you know, um, you know, it's like he's done a sense of research on Hellenismos and what it means to be a polytheist in the modern world. Uh, so it says, do note that I'm not Greek, speak Greek, or am I in any way associated with Greece? So I like to explore Hellenismos to, for what it is and its beauty, especially the myths and the modern revived religion. The book's dedicated to Hellenists, uh, but you should take it with a grain of salt because the author, practi author practices magic. And it's probably a Wiccan rather than a Hellenist. Um, well, yeah, okay. Um, so, um, okay, then let's go up to the one star because I think that was the one that reviewed it and yeah. Okay. Um, but nobody actually commented on that one. Um, so, but still, it was a good book and it um and i did enjoy the book immensely and i would definitely recommend it to anyone who wants some basic basic information um but definitely on the reviews if you look at if a book has more stars and the people reviewing it are not like all oh, these airy fairy kind of people you know perfectly well that hey the book is the book is at least worth looking at you read the book and you make up your own mind and i i do me wrong i like i like book reviews but i like to actually buy the book and make up my own mind based on that information so so but yeah so that is where my path turned around um, I had, um, I'm actually going to be doing a video, uh, probably this week. Um, I have it, I have, it's on schedule, uh, talking about living with unsupported parents. And I'm going to tell you something, um, you know, when you live with unsupported parents, it's a nightmare. And I'm going to be talking a lot about living with unsupported parents or parent. Uh, in my case, I, my, my father passed away when I was a year old, and so I didn't know him, but I had an unsupportive um, parent who at one time had been supportive. Um, but, yeah, so, you know, when you start on this journey, have you ever read, oh, okay, you, no, I have not read any of his books. I do plan to buy one of his books, and if he's got a Patreon I definitely will donate because I believe in supporting Hellenic temples and, of course, Roman temples as well. The, um, that's where I got the shirt from. I got my, the search from, sorry, I got this shirt from Temple of um, Ark, 
or Thanatype Knox, that they actually make the T-shirts, and Tim Pelov, um sent them sent one to me. And I'm actually listed as the first person who got one, so I'm really happy about that. Um, but definitely I'm going to check him out. You know, one of the big, I think, issues that I see in uh, modern-day Hellenism and we're, we're going to go into the future of Hellenism because I think that it's important to realize that nationalism has infected Hellenism. Uh, I'm not a big fan of Chris. Oh, okay. Um, why are you not a big fan of Chris? Um, everyone has a right to their opinion, and I, I totally get it. I want to pick up one of his books just to see his writing style, but um, I kind of... I kind of don't know what to make of him. I do know that he did do a blog post about the Roman goddess Ceres, who was removed from the Capitol Dome because she had to get cleaned, um, and how this one representative got on there and was like, no, 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 I don't want that statue, you know, back on the Capitol. She needs to be in a museum or something. Um, when you do a restoration of the entire Capitol building, you actually idea is it going to go back to the Capitol building? Just thought. Um, but yeah, so I just go buy one of his books and just see, you know, what his writing style is like. And, you know, hey, you know, if I don't like the book, I'm still going to put it in my library and say, yeah, hey, because I don't throw books away. Um, but yeah, so um, so a lot of nationalism has gotten into Hellenismos. Uh, we're talking about Greece. We're not talking about other parts. Um, I don't know if that happened, started happening when Val Rassius was head of it or it started after he passed away. But um, it's just not good. And any kind of nationalism... And I actually, I actually did a video about nationalism in the polytheistic community, and somebody thought that, that it was hilarious. I'm like, uh, no, my subject was not hilarious. It was serious. Um, but I'm the future of hell. The future of Hellenism is not exactly clear. Um, you you are going to have um, like. You are going to have groups that are going to adopt the national, the, like the belief that you have to be of Greek blood in order to worship and venerate the Greek gods, even though those gods were were integrated into Roman society and they had temples to them. Um, so you know, it's it's kind of uh, yeah. I used to be one of his members of the temple when he first started up back. Then we had a falling out. He kicked me out, and I tried getting back in, but he blocked me from communicating. Oh, that's bad. That's, no. But, like I said, you know, yeah. Um, my, per my personal belief is this. Everybody has fallen out. It's how you act. And I'm talking, I'm most importantly talking about Chris. Um, it's, it's how you act. Personally. If I had a member that had a different opinion, I would say, okay, I tell you what, I'm going to... I'm going to listen to you, and I'm going to think about what you're saying, and if it truly has a valid point, then I'll accept it. But um, but since I didn't know, I don't know about you know about you know the reason you guys fell out. I'm going to take your side uh, because um, because. You know, the impression I get, don't know if you knew him during the YouTube days when he used to call himself, oh, yes, I did. He, I actually watched a couple of his videos when he was Lord Chris Ulrich. 
and that was creepy. <laughs> I don't know if he got the creep thing, but it was kind of weird. Um, I do know that his wife did a video where she talked about how um, she was denied the right to have a hair, her hair styled because she happened to be pagan. I don't know if she mentioned it because I've had my hair my hair done before, surprisingly. Uh, I go, you know, I really want to go back to the, like, Fantastic Sam's. It's a, a place here in the States where you can get your hair styled and cut and all that type of jazz. And I got way too much gray hair. So this girl is, okay, this girl is going to, oh, wow. Huh, sorry about that. Oh, he was cringy, he was cringy as fuck. Yeah, his wife was called Blue Fire Witch, and yeah, I remember the argument about her hair, and it was when she was to marry Chris, etc. Okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I remember. I remember it. Um. But um. Yeah, they have a cute kid. They really do. I, I really like their kid. I hope their kid grows up to be something good. Um, but, you know, when you when you have a temple, um, you're going to have people with different opinions. And we all have to respect those opinions. We all have to respect people's opinions because I have had an opinion get shot down as not being valid. And I know how that feels to have an opinion that's not considered valid and just really, really wonder why am I even here? Why am I even here? But yeah, I, I mean, my path has just, like I said, twisted and turned. And the future of Hellenism is, as I said, it's not clear because we have we have organizations that are popping up in the United States. You have Helion, you have Chris Chris's Temple. You have all these different types of temples, and you really kind of, you know, they, they all have different ways in which they do it. I have my own little mini temple here um, and everything. But the few, but as, but one of the great things is with the, um, the Zina Declaration. I think that we're addressing that right from the get-go before it becomes this issue. Um, but um, you know, it's it's great that we nipped in the we not nipped in the bud because it's still there, but really addressed it before we ended up having our symbols declared hate symbols and whatnot. But back to Chris, um, he was actually a member of Timothy J. Alexander's group uh, forum, and I actually talked to him, and he was like, oh, you know, magic isn't hubris and all that nonsense. Um, I still honor Hecate as a household deity. I honor her for her protection. Um and whatnot. Another thing that, and this was, I think it was last year, the year before last, I don't know what, I know it was in the last like three years. They have, so um, Getty's images, now this is really weird. Um, Getty's is actually owned, I think, by the, there's a, there's a movie that came out last year with Chris Plummer, um, he was, he actually played the role, um, that one guy who admitted that he touched people inappropriately and then came out as gay, thinking that, um, that was going to win some points. Um, the guy that did the negotiator, he was a negotiator, he was the white guy. Well, anyways, um, Kevin Spacey, Kevin Spacey. 
Uh, so he he actually replaced Kevin Spacey, uh, but Kevin Spacey already gotten paid and all that jazz. And um, so um, he basically his grandson had gotten kidnapped, and he wasn't going to pay pay the ransom. I don't remember the name of the movie, but um, yeah. So. Yeah, so, um, it was, was, oh, I forgot what was, oh, my brain's not working right now. So, anyways, um, if I could repeat, if I could go and rewind, that would be great. <laughs> I can't. Um, yeah, it was Patrick Christopher. So, he was on there, and he was basically talking about how magic is not hubris. And then he did this really horrible, cringeworthy video that made me go, what the heck are you doing? So he got kicked off, I think because of the video. Um, but yeah, so yeah, he, he did some cringeworthy videos that maybe go what the heck are you thinking so um yeah so he has a temple and now temple of uh van you remember to what uh, i don't know talk about the cringeworthy video that chris brought out attacking timothy j alexander's group i don't remember I don't, I don't even remember what year it was. I, I know it was a pretty long time ago. I think it was like the last, like over 10 years ago. I don't know. Um, I do know, though, that Timothy J. Alexander is no longer involved in the Hellenic community. Um, and somebody says he's doing politics now or something like that. I don't know. But Timothy J. Alexander and his books and his form really opened the door for Hellenism for me. And it was it was such a pleasure to go on there and to um and to um be around like minded people. And know that's a term that Wiccans use, but it's the truth. Um, I do remember there was one question that was asked. There was a there was a gentleman or a lady that was going into basic training and he or she wanted to take their gods with them. And it was recommended that um, that um, oh wow. Hearst filed for chapter 11 bankruptcy. Interesting. That's, oh wow. Um, so um yeah, so she wanted, she, you know, it was a woman. She wanted to bring her gods with her, and they recommended that she um, laminate them, yeah, laminate the gods, and put inside your makeup bag or whatever bag you were taking with you, and that way they would be with you. So I thought that was an interesting idea. But, as I said, the future of Hellenism is not clear um and we have to understand that for a very long time it will not be clear and you know one of the things i'm going to be doing when i move into the apartment no matter where it's at um is i'm going to have a place that is specifically for me venerating and honoring the greek gods Okay, so I'm going to end here. Oh, Chris did that and stuffed them to his son's. Oh, interesting, interesting. Okay, so I'm going to let you guys go. I am really dead tired right now, so I'm going to go off to bed. But thank you so much for commenting. Once again, Angel, thank you so much for your live chat. I really appreciate it. Um... So I'm a, before I go to bed, I'm actually going to look up um, what the uh, next topic was, and I'll be back probably tomorrow. I get off at 3.15, so I'll be back at least by 
5.30. So I will do another live stream video. So thank you so much for uh, listening to me rambling and raving about movies and stuff like that. So I'll see you guys around until next time. Be happy, healthy, and most importantly, be safe. And may the gods bless you. Oh, thank you. Oh.